Joshua Hamlin here at Bricks Cascade 2022 in Portland, Oregon. And today I'm joined by my good friend, Andres Lehman. And we are going to be giving you a tour of the whole convention floor here at Bricks Cascade. This is actually your first American Lego convention, isn't it? It is. I'm really happy to be here and let's do it. Yes. So you will notice some people around here. This is kind of an early friends and family night. So we'll do our best to stay out of people's way and show you as many of the creations as possible. We're starting right here with Castle and Pirate. And we're going to start with this massive castle layout by Pamela and Austin. Uh, this is a mother-son building team. We featured a lot of their work over the years. They do fantastic work. What I love about this layout here is the very unique architecture. It's not the normal sort of European medieval castle. Yeah, and there are so many lovely colors here, different structures. So this is a really lovely layout. Yes. What are some of your favorite uh, colors and details in this one? I'm a big fan of teal. So it's good to see those colors as well. There on top and also the, the white temple there. So this all matches very good. Perfect. Fantastic layout. We'll definitely have a more in-depth video on that as well. I love this layout here as well that has the beautiful rock work. So the combination of the gray with that. Is that like lime green? Yeah, this is lime green. Exactly. Yeah. And also teal on top. Oh, there you go. Even more teal for you. <laughs> so much teal for me. Perfect. Uh, behind that is a nice sort of like village scene. So you've got almost looks like, uh, I don't know, I don't know some, some kind of like inn or building back there. Notice the use of the uh, Thor's hammer piece um, on the walls of the building. This looks stunning, and I also would like to mention the roof, which looks very good. Uh, so the roof on the smaller building is very nice as well. I think that's like the Wolverine claw piece. Exactly, the, the hands. So yes. the, uh, yeah. uh, next to that, we've got, this is sort of a uh, almost wintry looking scene. I guess maybe it's just like the rapids around the rocks down here in the water. But I like, looks like some of the, some of the pier was kind of broken off by the water. Yeah, a lot of starts lot on top building techniques there on top to make this little roof. So this was really great. How about those trees as well? Really great work on the trees. They look like the, the ones we've seen in Portland here. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, this is another build, Shadar Logoth. I don't know if I said that correctly, but uh, I like the, all the different kind of rooms here with those, those nice looking pillars and then the, the domed top piece is great. The usage of those um, elements are really great. So we have this new one by two element, which is used there on top. For the dome there? Yeah, yeah. this looks really great. And then the King's Council, uh, using some great use of purple, uh, big, nice chairs, and then kind of a, uh, a fig barf, sort of, just a whole bunch of types of different parts from uh, castle and some like robots, some alien stuff in there to create all the different characters. This is a neat, really nice setting, and I like those Dioramas where you see a lot of minifigures inside, so this is a nice scale here. This build behind it is fantastic. This is from the Wheel of Time, White Bridge, and obviously the thing that captures your attention here is the big arched White Bridge. Uh, it uses those nice kind of decorative pieces on the sides there, but then the town itself is really great with more, more of your favorite color. I see, again, it's teal, and this would be so much fun to cross actually the bridge together in real life, so this is fun. And I love the usage again of those teal elements, and I like this. This could, could be like in Belgium or some, somewhere else in Europe. This looks really great. There you go, it would be great to cross that bridge with you. This would be so much fun, yeah. <laughs> and we've got some Hobbit, I think this is Bag End, and I think we've, we've got somebody else is showing up here to kind of crash the party. Oh, a lot of things going on. I cannot see him right now. Oh, Thor's there. All right. Okay, so much fun going on. So this is a lovely setting for all Hobbit fans out there. And then we've got Tower House here. So it's got the guy delivering flowers to the lady in the uh, kind of tower fortress. And what I like here is the scale. And so the, the, the height is really great. And the usage of, of leaves there, nice colors. So like autumn, scenery. Yeah, that's looks stunning. This build is by Eli Wilsey, who's a fantastic builder, featured his stuff over the years. Another fantastic builder, this is Doug Hughes back here with another Wheel of Time build. Uh, this also looks fantastic. Uh, the water, with kind of the waterfall flowing into the beautiful landscaping and then those red roofs. And to mention this really nice new element, 2x4 round tile there before the windows, in front of the windows, which is... Um, around here since the new Super Mario sets, which is really cool to have such a nice table or something like this, a setting. Oh, oh this, yeah. yeah, that one there with the, the kind of park benches. Yeah, this is really cool. So you can use those elements from other themes and then put it into your creations. Look at you with all your knowledge of new elements pointing that out here. I'm out there, you know me. 
here's the first of uh, many wonderful ships that we're going to see here. So kind of moving from Castle into more of the pirate section. Uh, I love all the action here, using those ice cream cone pieces as the explosions. So I think John is really afraid right now because a lot of going on. So this is a nice element to actually show what's going on on this pirate ship there. So this is really well made. This next build is massive. It's, this is uh, it's League of Legends Bilgewater uh, by Jesse Gross. And there's so much going on here. Uh, you've got this large rock arch section with all these ship sections on top. So I'm not familiar with kind of the source material for this. But the build itself looks fantastic. Here's a large aquatic creature that's been cut up and they're like dragging sections of it up in the air. This looks great. And please talk to the builder. I would like to know... Uh, why this is all so stable. I think there's a lot of Lego technical elements inside this rocket, whatever, mountain thing, but this looks all in all stunning. A little bit of cyberpunkish, whatever, but it looks, I don't know the show or what's going on, the movie. Oh, like steampunk. Okay, steampunk issue, yeah, but this looks all in all really good. Mm -hmm. Great work there. And now we move to a large Napoleonic era type battle, and this takes up a whole kind of tea table section. So you've got one, one armada is moving in a straight line uh, this direction, and you've fantastic ships. There's smaller varieties of ships, so you've got uh, some really small ones that have like a mortar type on them, and then much larger kind of ships of the line that have quite a few cannons on them as well. And so that's the, the red fleet, and then the blue fleet here is kind of crossing the T at the top, and you can see all the fantastic sails. Uh, the, the ships are all full of the marines and the sailors, these are beautiful. I love seeing well-built Lego ships because it's such a hard kind of angle and design to capture. Yeah, well, those are not like big, big elements. This is all brick built and I grew up with all those pirate sets so this is really lovely to see here. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the red or the blue team is going to win? I think the blue team. There you go. I agree. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, uh, the British and the French here. Very, very nice. And then we move more into some military builds here. So you've got, uh, you've got some kind of jets. Uh, you've got kind of like a landing there, sort of reminiscent of a D-Day type, type build. Some great helicopters over there. And then a bunch of German planes and tanks, I think mostly from World War II here. Kind of some information down here about them. So one thing that always impresses me about these historical builds is kind of the amount of research that builders do to, to get them as precise as possible. Yeah, I mean, this is history, and you can build whatever you want with Lego bricks. So I'm not really into tanks, as you know, but, I mean, those are big models as well, smaller ones, and it's great to see how those elements are used here. Mm -hmm. I particularly like the scene you're, John's showing right now. It's just called Fire, so it's like a German artillery uh, uh, team there with some machine guns. So this is Legoland scale, like 1 to 20. And why, those big why, why don't we see that in Miniland in, you know, Florida? I have no idea. Maybe you can reach out to Lego and ask them if it's shown in Legoland Billund or somewhere else. But I don't think so. We've got this really nice uh, Junkers plane here, the JU-52. And then in the back, oh, it's an army of frogs. Look at that. <laughs> this is a lot of frogs. So that, uh, I have to mention this plane, uh, I've, you can see it in Hamburg, actually. So um, it's still there, so this, this old plane. Yeah, it's like they have like a museum model of it. Yeah, you, you, you can still see it up in, 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 up in the oh, sky. They fly. Yeah, okay. that's a flight, yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you, yes. But uh, the frog army is spectacular. They're even riding oh. horses. They have axes and swords and bows, spears. I've never seen a frog army before. <laughs> now I see all those frogs. Yeah, oh, this is really, really, yeah. I mean, so. it's called frog army. There's got to be frogs. Of course, but... I've, I know this frog is, uh, we've seen so many like gold, and some, it's actually the, the frog in green. So, okay, it's good that it's still out there. <laughs> Here we have some more uh, World War II, I think, battle scenes. Some more info. Uh, this is like 1945, and I think Italy based on the info up front, and then to the right is 1942. Did you do these builds yeah, here? Those two are mine. Great, awesome. So, for this one, all of the chest and torso decals, front and back, are designed by me and printed by me. Uh, everything here took a couple months to design. A lot of hard work went into them. But I endeavored to be historically accurate with all of it. Fantastic work. Thank you. And then behind that is some Starship Troopers builds as well. And then we move over to, uh, this is 
the Lego. This is a modern day Legorado, according to the. Uh, this is a modern day Fort Legorado, according to the mock card. So, uh, many people are familiar with the old Western set. This is kind of the modern U.S. version of a fort. And the original one is the favorite Lego set of all time of Joshua Hanlon. There you go. Look at you with the, the fun facts. <laughs> Some more uh, German tanks out front here, as well. Uh, this model back here is by Jake Sadovich. We've actually featured this on the channel before, so if you want to see an interview on that, his Dauntless 32 U.S. Navy vessel, wonderful, wonderful build, obviously a great builder, and he was able to pack in a lot of cool parts techniques into that. Check out the color on this build up here. Wow. This looks stunning. So many lovely colors here. Nice compact scale, so this is something. The gold, the gold dome pieces are fantastic, and then we see kind of the... Sort of like we saw with some of the domes earlier, uh, you see the, the pieces being used to create those kind of curved structures. Yeah, and I mean, all in all, this is like a layout I would love to see on this show, like something totally new, like great colors here. So this is, And I was, of course, looking at the castle already uh, behind, which looks great too. Um, there cannot be enough castles. There's, that's why there's several of them right here for you. <laughs> there, is another great castle here. I love the, the big towers, look very intimidating. The cool portcullis there and everything. This old uh, kind of knight there as well. So I love when people use the older medieval pieces. Yeah, and I still have them at home. So it's always good to see like we've seen older ones and newer ones. And this is kind of a combination of it. Here we've got a couple very unique builds starting with this like hermit crab castle build. And then also the Santa Claus coming to town <laughs> layout. So. Uh, I think Santa Claus has his troops troops ready. I don't think it's it, this it's the original idea of Christmas, but uh, yeah, I like this army of small uh, swords. The elves. The, the elves, yeah, of course. <laughs> elves. Here you see some of the some of the old gray kind of mixed in on this build, giving that weathered, textured look to the castle. And this element is missing here. So there also oh, there's the printed version of it also. So. Those are the good old days, the 80s, where we've seen those castles. In the back is Elm's Keep. This is bu built by the one and only Boone Langston. We have a video of this on the channel as well if people want to hear more in depth from Boone about the design process. But I love all of the movement here and the idea of building this all in the tree is great. Big Boone Langston fan, shout out to Boone. <laughs> and this looks stunning, of course. He's the man and so much fantasy inside. Looks like a Lego Masters model here. <laughs> I wonder why. Up front here is great, so it's like kind of a library with a guy reading in there, and then it's almost like the world of the book is surrounding him and it's coming alive. This looks great, and this is allowed to actually use such an element which is not Lego, but it looks stunning. Yes, yeah, to give support and kind of create the overall structure, yeah, you yeah. can do that. And there's a lot of gold inside, so don't leave me alone here. <laughs> Speaking of gold inside, check out this treasure chest with the moving crab protecting his treasure hoard. Movement is always great to see in such a LEGO model, and this is lovely. Next we move to a very large layout, another one that we have covered on the channel in the past. This is the hunt for Hidden Falls treasure, and it starts with a wonderful underwater coral scene and a shipwreck, and then moves into the beach scene with all of the pirates having tons of fun. There's lights everywhere, uh, there's cannons going off, tons of action. You see a lot of action here, as you mentioned, but also the lighting is really great. And the whole scenario looks great when you just step aside a bit. In total, this is awesome. Yes. Uh, very, very impressive layout. So definitely check that out on the channel as well. And the sound is good. Nice addition here. Yeah. So many elements to this build. Here we go. We'll keep moving down here in a second. Excuse us. Thank you. This is a Viking raid here. So we're kind of... Moving a little further back in history, getting a nice uh, Viking. Obviously, you see these cool longships landing and then attacking the village here. A lot of great animals here, great structures, nice Viking boats in front. So all in all, another awesome layout. I think the, the Vikings already hauled the goats away. I think so. I think so. So they are missing. <laughs> <laughs> and then another little kind of like pirate shipwreck. So these are some modern divers exploring a shipwreck here. So it's kind of a different take on the typical like pirate layout. A lot of ships have, have some issues here. Uh, here we also have a scenario where something went, maybe Lego has released the Titanic and since then I was thinking we could build something as well here. 
There you go. And some more fantastic pirate ships. Got the Black Pearl with the skeleton crew. And then a whole kind of ship layout back here. The Barracuda Bay represented in both the island and ship form. Some other uh, kind of more Pirates of the Caribbean ships here. I love all the naval builds. It's good to see them together and how it looks when you get all those sets and your own ideas also. So this is nice. And this is awesome here to use some colors which you wouldn't expect when it comes to Lego Castle. It's the Lego City Construction Castle. It is still under construction and it's really funny to see. I like those ideas. And moving down, you've got this nice bridge scene. Here's another kind of castle tower. I love the, the rock work that kind of sets the cliff face above it with the stairs going up. Yeah, I like the building technique here with this bridge, which is really awesome. And you curve, and you've seen the, 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 the curve here, which is, which is cool. And the scenario right next to this is lovely too. Again, those colorful leaves. This is something special in those um, builds. And this looks great. We've got the large white stone fortress and obviously white stone because of the mostly white castle. There's some gray mixed in there. So uh, an unusual color for a castle, but it works really well here and it kind of adds some variety. And a different type of trees in front, which is, which is cool also. And all those different green, like lime green, regular green, dark green. This is really cool. Yes. Fantastic nights there as well. Those look great. Yeah, so all in all, a lot of minifigures, which is always important to add many minifigures, and this is exactly the way to do it here. Final castle here in this section is by Cody Otley, another build that we featured on the channel in the past. You can see the venerable builder himself right sitting right back there. He's added, he's added a little bit here to it since we last covered it. But this is not an official Lego element, it seems. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's an official element. <laughs> but it looks great. And ah, here we go. Here we go. All right. He's got, got to represent there. Brick beat is out there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Things are starting to break. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Stormy weather. Stormy weather. Yeah. We'll, we'll let him uh, fix, fix that up. And that finishes out the, the castle kind of pirate section and then we'll move on to the next one an attack on the elven realm build here so is this you guys this layout back here so you got the two builders represented tons of minifigs uh you've even got kind of a ship landing out there you got a, the, the red army coming in here what are what's some of your favorite details here the tents are really great just use a few elements and it looks really great nice idea yes. very good work guys thank you and then oh, yeah. we've got another uh fortress fortress wall section here there's lots of things being uh launched at it and i think it's a it got a kind of a monty python reference down there as well so that's what that scene represents and then this is the haunted mansion i believe from disney so you've got the mansion build up top and then the kind of whole ride uh, experience represented on the bottom there as well so Fantastic work by the builder, even some exterior sections on the bottom there as well. What, what do you think of the Haunted Mansion? This looks really lovely, and again, the lighting is special here, and uh, there's something freaky going on. <laughs> we got some big kind of like robot uh, mecha type builds here. I'm not the biggest mech fan on Earth, but those oh, look great, especially to see all the different colors. I think it might be Transformers as well. I know somebody in the comments is going to get upset at us, but I don't, I don't recognize most of them. Yeah, so Joshua said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can blame me, it's okay. But these builds are great. You want to point out Scooby-Doo there? Yeah, but of course I know Scooby-Doo, so this, looks, <laughs> this is a nice idea, actually. Scooby-Doo, where are you? And then a little Fallout build. Uh, let's see, you've got some Fortnite there as well. You've got the, the Arizona Ranger. It's a, a green tea can turned into a, like a cowboy ranger. That's a very unique one there. I like that. Uh, let's see. You've got MacGyver scene there as well. And then some of these. Mar oh, it's a Mario leg lamp. Wow. Oh, this looks. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So It's like the green, the green pipe. Yeah, he's just getting in. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it looks fantastic. We've got some builders still hard at work here on this layout. Hello, good to see you guys. So, what what <laughs> what are you working on here? Uh, we got the uh, Spider Verse collab here. 
uh, myself, Troy, and Jesse. Uh, I took the uh, future. Uh, Troy took the uh, past, and Jesse took the uh, present day. We collabed it all together, man. Awesome. I love it. Well, I hope the build continues to come together for you, and I'm sure we'll stop by and chat some more later. Thank you, guys. What's up, Josh? Hello. Good to see you. Great work. So yeah, that's a whole extensive uh, into, into the Spider-Verse uh, layout there. Really fantastic work by all the builders involved. I also love how they brought this section down so it's a lot easier for kids to see and kind of adds more of a, a 3D element to it. I'm almost impressed by those brick-built streets. I mean, so many elements, but when you see it, it looks great. And then some more Spider-Man builds. This is kind of like a whole tall apartment building with lots of scenes happening on every floor. It's a nice and neat idea. Just, I mean, a tiny edge of a building and you can actually add all those minifigs. So again, cool. Got a Jane's hammer. So this one is kind of covered in ivy almost, lots of leaves. I don't think I've seen this type of Thor's hammer build before. There's also the official Lego set out there. So I haven't built this one yet, but yeah, you can try to grab it, but I think it's too heavy for you. <laughs> Got some Batman builds there. The ra rainbow bear mobile, it's like, it's like a Care Bear type of thing. I just look at this here, like the classic TV Batman, and he's ready for vacations. And if you've seen the new Batman movie, yeah, some holidays is always good. <laughs> This whole massive layout is 128 moving bat suits. So it's got a whole giant cave here, and there's tons of variety. What are some of your favorites as you look here? Batman as a musician is always good to see. There are so many different types. I have a lot of those, but not <laughs> so many. Here's a Buccaneer. And Batman. Uh, Captain, Captain America. Captain America crossover DC Marvel. This is allowed somehow, of course, for some fans out there, might difficult to see. But all in all, nice idea. And so you can see all your beloved Batman fix here. I love this little staircase. So it's like Batman comes up and then just chooses one of these suits. To hang there, yeah. I mean, this is the, the, the Batcave and it's a massive one. So this looks great. Great work there. We got some Marvel mech type builds. You got a uh, bat mobile, like a like a little uh, baby's uh, play area there. For the smallest YouTube uh, guys out there, your smallest yes, fans, yes. they can actually relax by seeing this. You could do <laughs> a completely 10 minute video of this, so the kids will fall asleep. Some, some ASMR type build? Yeah, maybe, when kids will see this, they're gonna be really relaxed then. And then some more figures here. We got some big Hulk. Uh, this is Beneath the Street. So this is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles build. I love this. Anything with layers like this is always really cool. It's kind of street level underneath and then even lower than that in the, the subway there. So every level has tons of action. Two, uh, I'm sorry, three different scenes here. This is really great. And yeah, lovely to see. And so many details like this crash there on the upper floor. So again, are, are you a fan of all their pizza? Of course, and Ninja Turtles are always hungry, so I would like to have a pizza right now too, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a break for pizza soon. Here's the uh, Justice League. So this is kind of all the different rooms of the Justice League buildings, then a bunch of the characters are represented here. There's, uh, was it the Flash playing himself in table tennis? It's going to be a really fast game. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Garbage Pail Kids, kind of mosaic. Uh, we got a Harry Potter dance party down here. Look at that. I like the stained glass in the background. And then Hogwarts moving staircases. Look at all this movement happening here and all the details on the walls. Perfect layout to cover with the camera because there's so much going on. All the staircases are really well made and so many lovely images there on top. So this is great. Even some wonderful lighting as well. Again, this makes a difference here, but because when you see it, it, it jumps on you. And then we've got, I think, a Lego Masters kind of mini builds layout. And so this is a lot of the builds from uh, Lego Masters Season 2 uh, kind of represented in a miniature form here. I haven't seen actually this final and the shows here. I've seen the German version of it, but um, I've seen some, in, some images. And it's great to have those big builds in the smaller version here. So... Lovely idea. 
and then we got kind of a, what's a Guns N' Roses build and then a concert happening up there. So it looks like some people having a good time. I could see you placing your, your Sig Fig in there. Of course, I can and uh, standing right now. So <laughs> let's like, he's dancing, you know, here. Yeah. But the, the question is, uh, would you rather have him there dancing at that party or down here at the World Cookie Eating Championship? Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> have some cookies here. All right. All right. OK. There we go. I, th I think you'll do well there. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Boone Langston's Magic School Bus here. Uh, this is on Lego Ideas if you want to go vote for it. Fantastic build. Wonderful show. Over 5,000 votes yet. So please support my good friend Boone Langston and make this to, to become this an actually Lego set. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, some more kind of sacred beasts. Uh, we've got the Animaniacs. Did you did you ever see the Animaniacs in Germany? No, I've not. I'm sorry about that. So you give all the background information right now. I don't. I don't have any information to give. They just look cool. What a big surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was that is that your build there? Yes, it is. Okay. Very nice. Great work. Classic. Yeah, it is a classic. <laughs> It'll get to Germany someday. <laughs> Next to that build, we have another classic build here. Uh, can you tell viewers what that is? I think this is a Brothers Brick, right? <laughs> so. Is it because of the green on top? Yeah. No, this is actually, of course, the beginning, the, the teaser, the, the, the trailer in front of every beloved Beyond the Brick content video out there since many, many years. <laughs> you I can gave, gave me the $10 later on yeah. or no? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll slip it to you later okay. on. Okay, good. <laughs> then a ton of uh, brick heads here. You can got a little like ship in the bottle build. Uh, oh, there's some builds from Dune. So Dune was obviously a very big movie that came out. Uh, have, that's the first builds I've seen from the show so far. I wonder if we'll see more. I haven't seen the movie Dune, so the remake yet. So I have to do it one day because this should be a, many people telling me it's a great. It movie. is incredible. A very very good movie. So I will see it right now. Goodbye. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't blame you if you left the tour <laughs> to do that. How about? How about the Rancors just enjoying their life down here? Yeah, I mean, it's all about fun in life. And if you have fun, it's, it's good. So here we go. Got a Gandalf bobblehead build. Here's a Grease Lightning jukebox. Uh, this is a perfect building. I like those 60s, 50s uh, mm -hmm. uh, time uh, music, rock and roll. Let's have a drink there in the bar, listen to some great music and also the movement, the colors, perfect model. You can't start singing any songs or else we'll get copyright. No, I mean, I could do some, some for you right now, some rock and roll, but maybe we will skip it because <laughs> then everybody would jump away here. But this is really a lovely build. And then, oh, it's a Candyland board. Have you, do, do you have Candyland in Germany? I know it, of course, yeah. of course. So we could play it right now if yes, you want. We can. I'm, I'm sure I would win, so we won't even bother. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> We've got GLaDOS, I think that's from the Portal video games. I've never played them, but always heard good things. But you know, Josh, it's about having fun, not about winning, just to add this. <laughs> but this looks all good here. <laughs> Again, nice movement. And then in front, we have this garage with all those cars. We know the Porsche, of course. You've got to give a special shout out. Of course, special shout out to, to Porsche, based in the south of Germany. So this is lovely. There's some random things from my childhood is the name of these builds. So it's kind of like different mosaic type builds, houses, bikes, uh, sort of almost like a, is that like a TV, I think? Lots, lots of different things from their childhood. Yeah. All in all, a lot of great memories, but now you're grown up and those years are gone. <laughs> and when you grow up, then you move on to the next build, which is Stranger Things. This, uh, this build is massive. It's actually two different very large mosaic sections uh, representing the show here. So I think we have the, the builder right here. So uh, tell us a little bit about this. Yes, Tim's not here, but okay. it's a collab, uh, Stranger Things. Um, two panels, mosaic, and then the head is built by Tim Philly. So hopefully he walks by here pretty soon. Um, but it's roughly 90,000 pieces. We hid, there's like a search and find. So we hid pieces from the actual set, the Lego set into the build. Oh, yeah. So people can find them easily. Um, but yeah, it's connected through Technic through the back. It's lit also by um, about six light kits on the bottom and six on the top. 
we wanted to make it pulsate, kind of like the show. I don't know if you guys have seen the show, but so the upside down, the demigorgon comes out of the upside down, and it has this pulsating red light. So we wanted to capture that as best possible. But yeah, with my mosaics, I like to build them more, a little bit more three D. So no, you kind certainly of pop out at you, you know. For sure, you achieved that really nicely. So spectacular work here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very impressive. Yep. Keep up the good work. Keep moving around the corner here. So we go to slightly different, a little more colorful material with some underwater builds. And then, I don't know what the, what the exact source material is for that, but there's a guy with a yellow mustache. I'm so sad that I missed this Stranger Thing a bit because I'm such a big fan. But uh, right here, I can add nothing more besides the fact that the colors are fine. And this looks like John Hanlon there. <laughs> is it the bird or the guy in front? <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's, here's a wonderful underwater scene. So we'll see some more examples of this later on. But I love anything like this with the coral. So many different parts you can use to add color. And then the, the cave they've created with, uh, I think it's Ariel inside there, is just great as well. The highlight is the cave here, which is such a neat idea. And to see it here from one meter, uh, it looks really nice, interesting. And I love those underwater scenarios. So there could be even more. I love it. Fantastic work there as well. And then for the, the next section here, I believe this is this is the world of Avatar. So any Avatar The Last Airbender fans out here, this is kind of a map of all the different uh, islands. Is that right? Yeah, this is the map from the opening sequence of the actual show. Okay. The actual spots and Easter eggs from the show itself. Yeah. There we go. So one for all the Avatar fans. Thank you. Yeah. And then we've got Monsters, Inc., so another kind of famous pop culture reference here as well. Are you, are you a Monsters, Inc. fan? Uh, I'm not, but we've a builder right here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Lots of movement. So how, how many times do you have to fix this throughout the show? Uh, today it's acting up a lot more than I would <laughs> like it to. It's done better in the past, uh, but mostly we're doing okay. Yep. Drop, drop a door here or there. But that's okay. That's okay. Right. Well, thank you for all the work I'm sure it takes to put into this. It's very fun to watch and see all the different movement and just the, the colorful doors everywhere. Glad you could enjoy it. And, of course, I've seen the movies and also the show. Now I know what's going on. Monsters. I'm sorry about that at first glance. I, did, I didn't even... I just saw the roller coaster. So a really nice idea. And my daughter loves the show. So thanks for doing this. Thank you. Uh, oh, you were so obsessed with the roller coaster. Yeah, no, no. I was just trying to find my way. And then I realized, oh, well, there's even more. Not only the roller coaster, all the doors. So I know what's going on there. Here we've got a South Park scene back there. And then Nick Jensen who we've featured many times for his video game weapons, actually going in a little bit different direction with his Polaroid camera. So you can see the real version here and then his Lego version next to it. That's wonderful. I love seeing people capture kind of one-to-one -one scale builds. This is kind of highlight, of course. Many people already tried to build the Polaroid with Lego bricks, but it's always great to see. And it looks like the original one. So this is something you can do actually with Lego bricks. Also, shout out to M Mulan there as well. I love, I love that the scenes and the characters represented. And then we've got the Lego Masters Book of Secrets here. So you've got what, both the actual physical book and the, uh, the brick built books there. Yeah. Tiny book. And the last scenario here is like a uh, lot of lighting going on, really minific scale, very tiny, but it looks nice. We got uh, Harley Quinn's guitar by Jake Sadovich. So he kind of took, you can either build it in red or black, and he combined it up and went for both, because why not? I go with a black one. And then the final stuff we haven't shown here, we got this uh, car from uh, Kingsman, the Golden Circle. I think it's a cab. I think it looks like the tires flip out and you can go different directions. And then I think these are all Pokemon here, but uh, I can't name any of them. So anyone watching in the comments, let us know what your favorite one is. The yellow one is Pikachu, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> hey, you got one, you know, there you yeah. go. <laughs> one, of, one of 20, no, but some figures you've seen somehow, but it's great. I think kids will love it. And now on to the next section. This next section is actually one giant Jurassic Park uh, layout here, and we'll actually have a whole in-depth video going over this entire thing. So we'll just give you kind of a teaser right now, but definitely keep an eye out on the channel for uh, a video going through this whole layout. We've shown different elements of it over the years as the builders have continued to work on it, but there's so much to see here. Uh, so many trees, dinosaurs, everything. 
This looks massive and I'm so old. I have actually seen the first Jurassic Park movie in the cinema, which was awesome. And to see all those elements and to see the franchise still out there. So this is a lovely layout with so many details and I'm looking forward to see even more. So it, 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 it's getting better, all the time, better and bigger all the time, which is yes, good to see. For sure. Well, we'll, we'll definitely have a more in-depth video on that as well. Now we're in the Star Wars cosplay and miscellaneous section, so you're going to see a variety of a whole bunch of stuff here, but obviously starting with Star Wars, though this build is actually I think Star Wars mixed with Harry Potter here, so it's hard to tell which fandom. It says the Empire invades Hogwarts, so it's kind of two of the largest fandoms out there molded into one. I've seen all the Star Wars movies. I'm not into Harry Potter yet, will be hopefully one day. But it's nice to see such a crossover because, again, it is allowed with Lego bricks. Yes, this is the ultimate like fan service build right here. It is. So if you're really into Star Wars and into Harry Potter, this is the perfect mashup for you. <laughs> we'll move on to a little more typical Star Wars build. This is the Imperial base on Forest Moon. And so you've got kind of a large uh, radar type build. You've got the bunker and then the lander here. I think that's, is that Darth Vader? I think in front, right? And this is actually great to see his ship in such a tiny scale. And again, you see, it mustn't be the USS set. It's totally clear which ship it is, so you just have to grab 200 bricks and we are done here. And this build is full of fantastic micro builds. Look at the little like speeder bikes, the walkers there. Uh, then the minifigures are represented, the people are represented in just kind of uh, one by one stud pieces. This is a really unique idea. I haven't seen it before. and just to grab a few bricks and show the scenario and Endor, am I right? Yeah. Otherwise, a lot of comments, but it's I, not I my channel. That's correct. It's not my yeah. channel, you know, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> but it's, it's great. Shout out to the custom built do not touch sign here as well. I think that, that looks like it's maybe 3D printed. This looks, yeah, it could be bigger, but maybe you can, you can see it right now. And we also have Hoth to give you all my Star Wars knowledge here right now. <laughs> You're just, just letting, us, letting it all out. I can talk for hours. No, this is lovely. You see all the 8080s coming. And again, you don't need 800 euro or dollar to buy this massive set. You can also have like 20 or 30 bricks and build your own 8080. Those ad ads are great. That way, I'll pronounce it differently. So one of us, that way all the fans are, are happy. 8080? Ad ad. Ad ad. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> here's, a, here's a Star Wars battle with some like custom, looks like some custom troops there. Kind of going through the uh, opening in the door there on, on a ship. I like it. And then back here we've got a whole bunch of minifigures. That's a carbon freeze chamber with Han Solo. In the middle, right, those days haven't been the best days in the life of Han Solo. <laughs> we got ATST patrol on Endor, so a few Endor builds. And then another Hoth build with a whole bunch of the walkers, the Adats there as well. Uh, I like the... Moss Eisley in the back, so whole tons of, tons of action happening back there. Uh, the palm trees are really nice as well. This looks great, and I already spotted my one of my favorite builds here uh, so far. I was really impressed by those mini Star Wars helmets in front. So you can see Boba Fett and the other guys. Please give us the name, <laughs> Uh The Mandalorian. Of course, and on the left... I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Me too. I was running as well. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But Boba Fett, of course, it is really great to see those colors again in this really tiny scale. Yeah. Sometimes it's the smaller builds like that to really capture your attention. I like the lightsaber here. That little Greedo kind of bust build there as well is fantastic. I'm using the teal again. Again, teal is the way to do it. Then we get into some of the, the larger Star Wars ships. So this is something you've seen a lot of on Beyond the Brick. I love when builders use the mirrors so you can see underneath there. This is a really great, I haven't seen this uh, uh, to make it this way, but you can see all the details then also on the underside, which is great. And definitely have to point out the uh, Star Wars Galador crossover with the Sebulba build by uh, Jake Sadovich, who we've mentioned a number of times. So he can build in any genre across any type of building. It's fantastic. He's awesome, and I've seen him in person for the first time 10 seconds ago. <laughs> this is his Tensegrity Cloud City build as well. Here we have a builder still working hard on his layout. So uh, you got a few, a few different ships you brought here? Yes. Very nice. <laughs> this one I, these two I did myself. Large. Okay. You got the landing base. Anybody can make a big landing pad. You know, this is a personal one. You know, make one. You know, but Vader has one. Oh, he fell over. Oh, poor guy. 
So just make one, you know, personal hideaway that you can get to, bring your shuttle in and land and, you know, enjoy away from the war. <laughs> you go. Sounds good. Thank you. Great work here. Fantastic builds. This is really great to see the Millennium Falcon with this live going on. So there's really the interior. The whole interior is there. Um, so this is, I mean, not the complete one, but it's, it's great to see that it's possible, actually, that you can uh, rebuild the UCS Millennium Falcon. This is a whole bunch of Star Wars ships by Jack, B Jack Goldberg here. Uh, you got a Venador class, Star Destroyer. So lots, lots of impressive builds on display. And the ship is getting more and more important again, but you haven't seen recently the new show, The Book of Boba Fett. You have to, then you know what's going on. Oh. Yes, I haven't seen it yet. It takes me a while to catch up. Spoilers are fine on your channel. Again, it's no, no, they aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Keep moving through here. Excuse us. Thank you. So this is a very unique group of builds here where it's uh, all black take on famous kind of pop culture ships. So you've obviously got the Millennium Falcon and Star Wars stuff. There's some Batman. Uh, you've got the crawler. Uh, you, you've got, uh, is that like the Castle Grayskull there? And is it like uh, Voltron? And just imagine all those builds in teal. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about the Ghostbusters here as well? This looks great. I mean, again, it's all, it's kind of, Batman related here, like it's all black. Yes, very, very Batman inspired. And then here's a whole kind of uh, city layout. I like the little milk bar sign back there. I was recently at Galaxy's Edge and very much enjoyed uh, the milk bar. I haven't been there, but one day hopefully. And here we have again many, many Lego colors. And I think there's not one single color missing, which is great. Check out, the, check out the pizza delivery man there. Oh yeah, he's on the run. <laughs> so this is great, very Ninjago City inspired. I love builds like this because there's so much detail and so much variety. I mean, Ninjago City has inspired a lot of these types of layouts and I think they look great. Obviously, the contrast of this next to all of those black builds uh, is very nice. It's perfect setting here, right? All those black models, you have this colorful one, yeah? And then we've got some smaller little vignette scenes here. And then a happy birthday build. So this is, I believe, the 10th year of Bricks Cascade, and it's sort of like a celebration birthday uh, theme. So this combines Bionicle. Uh, I think you might even have maybe like Ben 10 in there, uh, some old Knights figures, then a whole bunch of Duplo and Friends up top. So uh, tons of different elements combined into this build. It's always great to see Duplo bricks as well. And as we all know, you can combine them with very Lego bricks. So this is a good example here. How about this skull? I call him Joshua. Just because? Just just <laughs> Randomly. You know, because <laughs> I had this name in mind. No, it looks really great. The movement of the eyes is awesome. Here's the, the Adventures of Fred the Frog. This is a whole bunch of little builds with a frog going on all sorts of adventures up there by a few different builders. So some great kind of micro work there. I love, love that as well. Very, very clean looking, very clean. Yeah, again, this nice technique with starts out on top to have this layer there and I love this purple tree on the left. Check out this build called Balance and it's kind of like this cart almost with just the two big uh, wheels and just making his way down the street. Yeah, little diorama which looks great. And now look at this a whole Lego brick and teal. Beautiful. We see another use of the uh, Thor's hammer here for the, uh, the street kind of sidewalk on this build. So that's an increasingly popular technique. It seems that Thor's hammer is sold out on Bricklink these days because we've seen those elements a lot here. And behind that is a shoebox store. So I love these here. Uh, very representative of kind of the Portland, the Oregon area. Uh, so you've got a little bit of like Sasquatch there in the forest. And then the train with, I think that's probably uh, Mount Hood uh, in the background. It looks great. And did you, I think you saw that on the plane right in. Of course I did. I did. <laughs> very, very nice. And then you've got the, the book kind of uh, section here. So it's like building the scene uh, in the midst of all the Stephen King books. And this is a nice idea, which is of this um, different elements of the new roller coaster system. So it's not brand new, but it's since a few years out there. And this is really great to have this, this, this arc. Mm -hmm. Here's a, uh, a dumpster fire build. So do with that as you will. 
I like this imposter, so it's supposed to be like the Lego duck, but it's actually a chicken. Yeah, sometimes we don't know what's behind the build. <laughs> the, the, the story behind it. Check out the giant, the giant crown piece here. This uh, Captain Wanda Jefferson starship. Again, not in exactly, uh, I mean, it looks great, but it's, it's always a nice idea to enlarge a Lego element, and then you can see how it comes out here. And uh, let's see, that's the Candy Crusher, a little handwritten uh, mock card for that. So you've got sort of like a, a tank with all of the rabbit army around it. Oh, I like this. Here's some uh, lunchtime, and you've got kind of a, like a sushi tray there. Very nice. Here's a, a display on what is an NFT. So here's a, 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 NFTs are very confusing to me, so this is a helpful. May, maybe people watching this will be able to learn a little bit. I'm already one model here beside but because this is really interesting how he uses those elements of the roller coaster and i mean it's allowed but right here we see that those elements are you know this is shorter than it used to be so it's fine so a little customization yeah it's fine but you know it's always difficult. <laughs> it still looks fantastic, though, and uh, the buildings stacked on top of each other, kind of like I was saying earlier with the Ninjago City in terms of all the color. What I love here actually is the drop, so this is going to be really fun for the minifix. Yes. you got to create that fun roller coaster drop. All the babies represented here. I love that. Fantasy fish tanks with some more underwater scenes. A couple of lightsabers in the back. And then you've got a coral bonsai and a lionfish there. So wonderful kind of water backdrop. That coral bonsai is a really unique take on the bonsai and underwater kind of mashup. Perfect scenario here. And as I see, you're a big fan of those scenarios as well. Yes, yes. The lionfish also looks fantastic. That was by uh, Ryan Van Dozer. And I think he also did this super soaker here as well. So... That is wonderful, and it really stands out just because of the bright orange and yellow colors. I love the large, like, Mars mission tires. And what is also special, I like it, but also impressive is here the Lego hot dog blaster. <laughs> <laughs> Equally impressive model as well. You got some retro blasters by Boone back there. Kyle Moore, this World War I uh, French gun. Then we've got... Some massive uh, weapons here as well. Uh, this Kevin Warner has his giant uh, Cloud Strife's Buster sword there. So that thing is just a beast. Uh, you've got a, Thomas with his sword of the creator behind that. So some of these builds are just crazy huge. They are, and I would guess you cannot hold them, but <laughs> hopefully nobody will no, grab I, them. I think you can hold some of them. I've seen photos of Kevin holding that. This big one? Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is great. <laughs> uh, Here's another Nick Jensen. Uh, this is his uh, SMG uh, from Titanfall here. Looks fantastic. As always, make sure hit that hit that subscribe button on Nick Brick there. And here's the awesome Lego blanket. This is by uh, Dr. Cat Builds. You can see the cards here. So I think she made all of this herself. Instantly recognizable, very iconic Lego logo. Looks fantastic. So this is kind of the cosplay section, so it's a different take on Lego. Then you can see the Emmett vest back there as well. There's like an icy jewel necklace. And then a uh, bunny costume. And then finishing out with a few Star Wars. So I think we've got the Mandalorian there. I like the use of uh, all like the quarter, quarter round pieces to make that. I was wondering, is it Boba Fett or Mandalorian? People tell us in the comments. Yeah, please let us know. It seems like when you look at it, no, it's, it's Boba Fett. <laughs> and then the last leg down here, I, this, is, this is such a great kind of atmospheric scene with the characters kind of in the middle of this jungle. Uh, you can just feel kind of the, the tropical intensity of that scene. Could already imagine that the stormtroopers are moving there. Yeah, this looks again stunning. We've got the child back there. And then the duel next to that. Uh, Mandalorian standoff scene. So this is when they just like, bl I think, blast a whole bunch into the yeah. building. First season. Yes. Um, and yeah. And then this nice, uh, yeah, kind of bunker scene here underneath the clip as well. Looks great. A lot of nice Star Wars layouts. So not massive ones, but all in all, very impressive. And I think this ATSD, oh my goodness, should he lie there? 
It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> this is back to where we started. So once again, with the Harry Potter Star Wars mashup, ah, yes. that finishes out this section for us then. Here we've got the first of the town and train sections. And so this is all town, uh, anything you would see in a town train layout. So you've got roller coasters in the, uh, there as well. That's, I know you're a big roller coaster fan, Andreas. I am, and I'm also loving trains. So we could, as you wish, like we could talk for hours here. Like um, we have this huge train here with all the... Train cars. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then here's a nice, uh, almost... Not really friend, there's a lot of bright friends colors in here, but lots of variety of minifigures kind of town layout. And we'll follow this train around the corner. Oh, I love this uh, observatory on the cliff side here. So this is really great. Look at the, there's like a telescope sticking out there and then the great little trail that kind of winds its way up to the top. I was just, so, sorry, I'm, sometimes I'm slow. This is by the way, the big boy in front, hopefully. But beside that, this is a lovely layout and I like the, the size. I mean, it's, it's really tall and a lot of nice elements. And I like the, queen, the, the clean look uh, on top there. So this is really stunning. Uh, this Forest Service Suburban looks great. I love that, that green color there as well. So my brother actually has a, a truck that's that color that was an old Forest Service vehicle. Oh my goodness, but all I have in mind are those lovely trains here. <laughs> yes, yes, the trains do look fantastic. Uh, what is this? This is the review, this is a bank building here, I think. For me, been not like a new yes here. Uh, this looks like a typical building uh, in a lovely city here. You always say as we walk around U.S. cities that you feel like you're in a movie. Yes, and <laughs> this felt like this could be a typical scene for any action movie. Uh, some wonderful vehicles all throughout here, and then I love the the lime green sort of uh, pinkish type build there. I'm gonna forget the names of all those colors. And here we see it is allowed to use and to show studs in your build. So this roof, again, looks great. I always love and looking for nice roofs. And this is very simple, but it looks the right way. Sometimes texture from studs is a good thing. Not everything has to be super smooth. Yeah. Oh, shout out to Culver's here uh, coming down to this end. So Culver's is a fantastic restaurant. I don't think they have Culver's in the Portland area that I'm aware of, but it's very, very good. Shout out to Steven Stelter. But this is all in all like a typical street here in Portland. So this looks very familiar. So nice looking. This like we have like the smaller ones and the bigger ones. So all in all. And this new modern build here. Is Apartment called. type building. Yeah. Ch check out the Mario theme build. This is also allowed. It's a Mushroom Kingdom townhouse. And really nice if John can capture this here, this build here in front. So a tiny one, but so many details. So it re looks really good. That, that pizza costume guy should be your sig fig. Of course, should be. The big boy, again. <laughs> the, the, the big train coming through. Uh, fantastic hospital build. So that's something you don't see a lot of with a lot of Lego cities uh, is the hospital. That's kind of a more overlooked building. But this looks fantastic. It looks like the builder. Are you working on some minifigures here? Yeah. <laughs> very, very nice. Well, I hope, I hope you can get it figured out and get it added into the build. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here's uh, flamingos. Look at all those wonderful pink flamingos. We have a lot of flamingos in Hamburg in the zoo. So it's lovely to see here them also in, on the Briggs Cascade exhibition. At, at first it sounded like they just kind of wander the streets of Hamburg. Sometimes they do. <laughs> Lego convention tour rig. So this is going when, you're, when you've got to take those builds out to all the conventions. That's the rig you need right there. And here we have the um, summer resistance, the, the summer apartment of Beyond the Brick. In I, th I thought I told you not to tell people that. I'm sorry, sorry, but it it really looks like the real one. <laughs> it looks it looks fantastic, <laughs> and then it kind of a nice uh, uh, water houseboat party going on there as well. A lot of houseboats in Hamburg, so it's always good to see. Do you have any Vikings though? No, but it would be really great if there would be an official Viking set in the future. <laughs> yes, I'd love to see. I'd love to see the theme make a comeback. Lots of wonderful, uh, like sailboats and tugboats, fishing craft, all sorts of stuff here. And then you've got the whole dockyards here as well. And there again, nice use of the roller coaster element. Yeah, you just love the roller coaster, don't you? I do. Roller coaster and train. That's all I need. Yeah. And then we've got. This is actually kind of a, got some movement to it. So sorting the, the studs out here, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about this, this build. Yeah. So this is a Putzmeister tail belt. It's a truck used to transport concrete, gravel, sand, anything that needs to be moved. Um, it's got a long chain. It's completely telescopic. It's powered by an L motor and a micro motor. Took me about four months to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> is this based on an actual yep. vehicle? Yep. Okay. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Keep moving down here. Thank you. Now we get to kind of the, the massive train yard. So this is just tons and tons of trains here. What, what are some of your favorites? All looks great. I mean, there, for example, this one here, which is like the right scale. I mean, it's not still completely correct, but they have to be this long. And this looks really great a to see many of those. A lot of these are representative of trains from like Washington and Oregon and the, the Pacific Northwest areas here. I think as well, so you see some of that represented. And there we have the tram, as I call it, here in Portland. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think they call that the Max. I think it's the, is the name for it. Okay, all right. Yes. So, very, very nice. And on the Pacific here? Yes. Light, light rail, not a tram. The builder is correcting you. Oh, I'm really sorry that I said tram. <laughs> okay. You got it. These things are very important. They are, they are. Okay, all right, all right. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you won't make that mistake again. Maybe I have to go now, I know. <laughs> lots, lots of fantastic. I love the colors of these trains as well. So yellow, orange, blue, uh, lots of variety. It's colorful, but still looks realistic. So this is all in all a very impressive train layout here, which I love. We got to show, show some of these at the very end as well here. Some of the most detailed models here, these are fantastic. Like the, the Northern Pacific green one there, Southern Pacific with the, the black one. It was fantastic. I couldn't pick one. They all look great here. So that finishes out the first section of Town and Train for us. So this is the next section that's labeled Town and Train, but you'll see quite a variety of types of builds here. So we start actually with a whole Western layout. You've got the general store, the whole Western town. You've got the arch, obviously. The train always has to go underneath the arch with the different colors of rock there very iconic. The gold mine in the back, so very reminiscent of some of the old 90s western sets that I grew up with and loved playing with. And it's good to see those old base plates here. Yes. There we go. Check out the check out the prairie dog mound as well. That's a really fun little detail. Super cute there. I love that. And the water falling down. This is a nice idea too. Lone Ranger silver mine. Uh, some more of these older base plates, kind of the stagecoach tracks, which creates a really nice effect. The old church here. And then what do we have happening here? This is like, uh, there's like lots of action outside, people enjoying, I think, eating outside, tons of lights going on. And I think it's like, a, is it a brewery inside? And to mention all those lovely food trucks. Oh, yes. Yes, obviously, big fan of the food trucks here. Lots of fun, creative designs on the food trucks as well. They're all cat-themed, so I think the whole thing is, uh, is cat-themed. Everything there, of course. And then we have this nice build with the Lego logo on the side, graffiti one, I would say. And this nice view here from, from the side, like little shops there, Lego store. There was uh, an oil shipment that uh, kind of went wrong, maybe some paint, I'm not sure exactly what. Who knows? Who knows? Here you've got a lot of like smaller train cargo city builds. Uh, I like the, these little, some nice micro scale work here as well. Trains through time. So it's kind of like a timeline almost that takes you to today. I like those little micro scale builds. Uh, you've got the, the wrecking copter. So look at it. It's got the missiles on it. It's got a net. It's pretty cool. It's a little, some teal. Yeah. Teal is always good as we know. And here we have the pickup. Very nice. Treehouse in the back. Hello there. We've, we've got a builder hard at work. Uh, as always, you know, it's the night before public, public hours, there's always more work being done. Yeah, it looks like uh, this is taking quite a lot of work. This was um, at Brickworld 2019 when that last happened. And I've been reworking it since then. And it is apparently not flawless <laughs> like I thought it was. So I'm working on that still. Tune in later. There'll be a, a follow-up interview. Oh, 
Here when we go. When it is working. Yeah. Anyway. Teaser. I like it. There. You keep up the good work. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> and now we come to a massive, this has monorail city and a giant mountain cliffside as well. So there's something for everyone here. And, and we have the best Lego train of all time here. The old Amtrak one. Uh, I have it at home. It's still good to see them. The, those trains here and shows. And may I ask you, Joshua, will the monorail come back? No idea. But I like I like that you said it was the best Lego train of all time because then you, you trigger the train heads and then you get lots of people fighting in the comments. Again, it's not my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to give a shout out, as always, to the rock work. That's something I really appreciate when yeah. people capture that well. And just with the amount of bricks there and how fantastic that looks. And John has to show, like, this view is awesome from, from the side that you see really all those buildings. This could be in Switzerland, you know, that really like a little town uh, right next to the mountain. Here's a whole bunch of mosaics, and I think they even show kind of some of the, the way that they put this together here. Um, then you've got lots of different, uh, I think, like movie characters, historical uh, people represented here. Um, maybe even some, there's even some art. So lots of fantastic stuff. If you can name everybody here, I will buy you an ice cream, Joshua. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get any ice cream then. <laughs> <laughs> but lots, lots of great builds. Uh, I like the way they display this using these big plastic bricks, so it kind of elevates it and gives a nice different look. I think we've got some uh, poison ivy here from Batman. What, what, what are some of these characters? All are looking good, but what I think really nice is here that we have a mosaic where you add actually other bricks as well. Yeah, and not, not, it's like uh, printed bricks too, so it's got all sorts yeah. of designs on there to add that texture. From the dots, uh, little dots polybags here. So this is a nice idea. Yes. Shout out, shout out to the, uh, this painting is on display in the, the Art Institute in Chicago. When you come to Brickwell Chicago, we can go there, you can see it. A very, very fantastic painting there as well. And then Star Trek. Of course. No, we all know them. Luke Skywalker there on top. Mm. My favorite. Uh, here's another concert. So once again, you can uh, you can put your put your minifig in there at a later date. I don't know. I haven't seen this electronic guitar yet. This e-guitar. Maybe I missed it. But beside that, it's always good to have so many minifigs around, and this looks like a big party there. I love this ramen shop and this layout next to that there. Ramen shop and dojo. That's super cool. And then kind of the pier area as well with the slushy stand. Uh, check out this monorail here. What do you think of this? This looks like uh, something we heard, may have seen in the MoMA as well in New York. <laughs> yes, hey, that's high praise. You could put that on display in the MoMA. A healthcare, kind of hospital building. And then a very large layout of, uh, let's see, you've got like a pool and then just kind of like a house back here. I love that, that almost like cabin type feel to it. So I like to swim here. This looks really great on top of the building. Oh, excuse us here. Thank you. Hello there. Is this is this your layout here? Oh, thank you very much. This is a fantastic layout here. So so give us uh, what's the like one minute overview of this? All right. So this is a 1930s village based in Yorkshire country, so England, uh, before World War II. So it's kind of to emulate the peace before the war. And uh, it's sort of a celebration of all my models. So I built a lot of trains, a lot of buses, a lot of buildings. And I thought, well, what the heck? Let's make a layout. And uh, I got really into it. And it's been here for a few years. But this is the, best, the biggest and the uh, best form it's taken. And uh, I'm really happy to see it here. It's kind of in full blossom mode where it's, it's been in my room for a long time. And now it's in the full light. It's open. I can see it from every angle. And I'm just really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, I've been grinding away at the buildings and I'm having so much fun. It's It's been a really fun show so far. It hasn't even started yet. I mean, this is just the uh, the friends and family hour and the, well, the Xbox hasn't even begun yet, but I'm really excited. So, yeah. yeah. Well, great, great work. Thank you so much for the overview. Keep up the fantastic work on the layout. Have fun. And then we'll move down to the corner here. And this is kind of a whole street layout here, isn't it? I like it. Again, modular building, stylish building here. Lego friends are out there as well, so the mini dolls on top, lighting, yes. and beloved colors. Yes. Fantastic work there. We get a little, some of these buildings get a little, a little bit darker here as well, but a nice variety. More, more elves colors here. Of course, and teal. 
There we go. And that finishes out this section for us. Welcome to the photography section. So this is all of the fantastic Lego photographs of builds and minifigures that A-Falls have brought to the show here. And there's such a nice variety of scenes. So you've got some from Kevin Warner. I think this is maybe from some of his Wheel of Time builds. Uh, and then you can see his Brick of Time poster there in the background as well. I love the, the big air buster there too. That looks fantastic. Then you've got the Shore Trooper here with some nice water. Got the Painted City, so that's a build by a few different builders there. The photographs very nicely. A few other very nice scenes from Caleb as well. What stands out to you here? I like the Ford Mustang, of our good friend. Um, and so, I mean, when you see those builds of, of Mike here in front, it's always great to take a photo of a lovely Lego build. Check out the, the Roman soldier having to slay the beast here, though. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So all in all, it's not easy to um, take images of minifigs. I try on my own as well. And to see them here, it is really lovely. Yeah. Well, this is some fantastic landscapes here. This looks incredible. And then our good friend Moto has, he has this whole build he's kind of made this box for, and then a whole bunch of photos on display as well. Shout out to Moto, I met him for the first time today. Yes. <laughs> and then now we're into the mosaic section. So these are both by Kelly Bartlett, uh, single line elephant and single line horse. Uh, what piece does that use? It is the antenna, and I haven't seen such, um, I haven't seen this idea before, and it's a really unique idea, and I think this is good looking. Yeah, and the, the black and white contrasts really nicely, so it looks looks great. This is real Lego art. Yes. Here's Oregon on the flip side, so they, they flipped the word and the state. I think it's all flipped around. And can you show me exactly where I am right now? Where you are right now? Uh, aren't we, we're like somewhere in here, I think. Maybe maybe where that green dot is? Something something like that. Uh, oh, actually, it's mar it's marked right there. Let's see, where where's Portland? I don't. I don't even think Portland's on here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like uh, it's like state parks. It's parks and stuff. My guess would have been I'm I'm here, but again, I will. <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see which one is closer. I don't think either of us was right. Here is another map of Oregon, but done in a very almost like a Hobbit type style. This is like you're in a helicopter and flying over the scenario. <laughs> yes, exactly. Shout out to the uh, PDX carpet there. So you've always got to have your, your brick built carpet tile. And I saw this carpet on my own and it's lovely. Got some Andy Warhol here. I think we it's, uh, several of these pieces we just saw in the MoMA in New York before we came here. We did. And this is like the old uh, Lego theme. Uh, Lego Black Falcon shield. Lego castle related, of course. This is fantastic with the, the multicolors here. So shout out to, to Joe, who captured that really nicely, like the gray and the blue, like that. And then you've got man's best friend. Uh, so this is, I think, a whole, like, it's like a dinosaur raptor, and then there's a volcano going off in the background. Yeah, and this is really cool. When you, like, stand in the middle of the room, you still can see it, what's going on here. And when you get closer, you see all the details. So this is stunning work. A little starry night underneath here as well. Looks great. Yeah, I've seen it a few days ago, <laughs> the original one. Uh, Iron Man. Very nice, like, retro vibe to that with all the gold as well. Yeah, so it's always good to see uh, those mosaics of Marvel and DC and other stuff here. Very nice kind of tartan look. And then this is fantastic. This is, I think, the brick bending guy, Jeff Sanders, Tenfold rosette, this is called. So, there's tons of different shapes. And we see here, Lego is also art. And we'll turn around and check out some more art behind us. Welcome to the Reading Rainbow. This is by Boone Langston. I think this is Boone's new build for this show. This thing is uh, massive. Uh, the the massive bowl of gold looks incredible. And then you've got, of course, the the giant rainbow with all the lights inside. It is an awesome build, and it seems like Boone is all over the place. Yes, he uh, wonderful builds all over the place. He's even got the books represented as well. Kind of that, obviously, it's the Reading Rainbow, so you've got to have the books. And I really have the feeling that Boone is inspired by Lego Masters. So since he's been, very, been to the final, because those giant models are really good looking. 
I like this layout. It's called No Water Necessary. You get all these beautiful plants and flowers and you don't have to worry about them dying. No, and this looks exactly like, I think, I would imagine this is your living room. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like this constellations here. So it uses, I think, a whole bunch of like uh, clear cheese slope pieces to create all those patterns. And here you can see, you can use the Lego set and to create something totally different. So not totally different, but at least something else. Yes, very different type of map projection there. Uh, here's a carving happening with like a vehicle, one giant monowheel vehicle. This looks great. And here we have your very own car like uh, I've seen before. This is another Jake Sadovich build. It's the Murray Torpedo Roadmaster. And the, the silver chrome, just fantastic. All those chrome elements but we won't see them in an official Lego set in the near future. Look at the, look at the layering on this build here of all the different elements that really make it pop and stand out. Yeah, real death there. Got a uh, build for the guild. This is the, be the bearded uh, builders guild here represented. You got the forge as well. Nice. And then the wings of pride in the background there. Lots of nice colors. Here's a... Uh, Beautiful Lego 2 book, and then I think one of the models from it. And shout out to my good friend Jonas. He's a big Johnny Thunder fan, so here he is still alive. Yes, Johnny Thunder is a fantastic theme. I like these different brick-built versions of Lego bricks and kind of upscaled parts. Yeah, we've seen Tiago doing this, and now we've seen it here at Bricks Cascade. It's always fun to see that it's possible to build actually Lego bricks with Lego bricks. <laughs> the Garden of Eden, tons of nice flowers. There's the Decade of Cascade. So I mentioned earlier, I think 10 year anniversary this year. And Jaja Brings is well known. <laughs> Congratulating us on 10 years. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and we've seen lots of figures here from the Star Wars universe and also DC. Yes. At first I thought you were saying Joker was a Star Wars character, but that's something I would say. Yeah, this, I would say this on my own YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> then there's a Jungle Tiger. Spider-Man, like kind of the half, half profile shot. Check out this uh, sweet retro toaster as well. This looks really great. So if you're hungry, here we go. <laughs> and again, Christmas is near. How do you how do you pronounce that there? This is German word. Right, so that's why I asked you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Weihnachtspyramide. <laughs> okay, very, very good, very good. Is this a German builder? I don't no no it's Susan Earls no I think okay. she just uh, just a cool cool build she wanted to do so you've seen this uh, many living rooms in Germany in there, you, there you go yeah. perfect uh, well look at this look at this record store here this is the place I would be uh, right now I mean this is a place where you just look for some new records and listen to it lovely setting here did you just say you'd rather be there right now than doing the video goodbye. <laughs> I love the, uh, it's like a, it's like a archer riding a hummingbird or something. And I love the snow globe there in front. I mean, this is such a tiny model, but it's all a Lego model must have. And the jackalope. And then here we come to the whole Jeff Sanders brick bending layout. So these, all of these creations are incredible. We'll have more in-depth interview with him about these, but I mean, every one of these, you just look at it, blows your mind how he's able to achieve all these shapes. Yeah, you would. It's so good to see what is possible with Lego bricks when you have lots of them. <laughs> and some, some wonderful creativity as well. I like the uh, sort of black light almost or just LED light shining on this to kind of show off the, the colors really nicely. And here we have the J for Joshua. Yes, that's what I think. The, I think that's exactly what that builder was going for there. So thank you. You're welcome. And that brings us back around to where we started. So it finishes out the art section. Now we're into the space mecha and post-apocalyptic layouts here, starting obviously with space with the massive EA-40 rising star spaceship here. This thing is just incredible. Uh, obviously what stands out immediately to you is the wonderful kind of smooth, uh, rounded work to create all these angles on the, the build. I talked to the builder, great guy, and you can actually open those parts to see inside. There are a lot of minifigures inside. We'll definitely have a more in-depth video on this as well. It's a fantastic layout. Uh, even even the, the stand he's made for it looks great as well. Very kind of UCS feel to the whole thing. So fantastic looking build. 
Here you've got the Perseverance. I believe this is one of the Mars rovers up there exploring Mars, uh, seeing, seeing what it can find. I, I don't see any aliens in the build. Maybe there are some. Are they invisible? Might be. There's a farm frigate in the back, so that's like little farm scenes inside all of the pods. And then you've got a police jet and some different space vehicles. And do you play chess on your own? I do occasionally enjoy a good game of chess. Uh, this appears to be, is it Ice Planet inspired, I think? It seems so, yeah. yeah. Very, very nice. Using some Nexonite pieces as well. And then what do we, we have the Scrapyard ship. So this ship just uses parts from all sorts of space themes, all sorts of Lego elements, just kind of throwing it together and seeing what works. It's a mashup. It's allowed. <laughs> classic space hangar in the back. So that's tons of the classic space kind of cubes all being organized by some uh, forklift type vehicles. A Lego show without classic space is not a Lego show. No, not even worth showing up to. Communication center here with all of these uh, antenna kind of satellite builds. And this is lovely to see the classic ship in different colors as well. Yeah, I even love how it's hanging there by those hook pieces there. Kind of gives a nice sense of movement. We've got some of these classic space vehicles, and we'll see some larger versions of some of that stuff uh, later on as well. The Explorer. Yes, the Explorer. Thank you. Here is sort of a futuristic uh, space uh, layout, Western future space layout. I guess that's how you describe this. This is the Western cyberpunk future layout, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's cowboys riding around on, like, motorized horses. I see a lot of Star Wars. I think it's Skywalker Ranch, so there's a lot of Star Wars in here as well. It's everything. And here we have a big classic space mech. Oh, yeah. Well, we were just talking about classic space, and you can't go wrong with a giant mech. I mean, look at all. It's like all the different classic space vehicles were thrown into one like a Voltron type of thing. And just imagine this would actually move. <laughs> and then some great micro work down here. Look at, the, look at the breakfast being enjoyed by the robots. Now we're now getting hungry. <laughs> Ooh, and I love these here as well, uh, these mechs. Lots and lots of uh, missiles. They look very scary. That's what I like to see. But they're really popular in the US, right? All those mechs, but they look great. And then continuing kind of the, the mech uh, of sort of transformer idea. You got this big plane here that looks fantastic. The, the neon knight with his giant sword. Oh, look at the banana guy. Yeah, he's looking for the apple. <laughs> is he in the apple like enemies or what's going on there <laughs> maybe who knows <laughs> we'll find out in the future extermination completed so it looks like they're uh maybe taking out the enemy i'm not sure what's happening there exactly more transformers what's up there teal is missing no it's not it's there okay mm, yeah you got to be careful what you say here viewers are going to point that out wonderful micro work all along here from the, I think these are all Transformers. Yeah, it says Lego Transformers here. So it's incredible. It blows my mind that people can build those to look so flawless in both, both shapes there. Looks great. So we've marched, but winter is coming, and we have Winter Village sets combined as one massive layout, like a Winter Village mech here. This is insane. This just blows my mind. You look at this thing. Look at the, the tree logs underneath there. It's kind of the, the feet. And then you've got like a chimney build up. You've got the reindeer coming out of one hand. Uh, there's the Christmas tree on top. Everything about this is just crazy. I love this build. Yeah, I see so many of those Winter Village sets. And to see them in combination, it's really looking great. And such a massive, huge layout here. What, what, do, you think, uh, what do you think of this uh, guy here? This is a rock and roll. <laughs> Here's the uh, Heartache Outpost, and this is by Mark Crookshank. So this is kind of post-apocalyptic uh, Friends uh, Heart Lake City here. So different take on the genre. But also it's like kind of the Niago City inspired. So again, this looks great. So many details and you could stand here for 10 minutes and discover all the little details. Fantastic work there from Mark Crookshank, as always. Here's from Pamela Henry. So she, we saw her work at the very beginning with her son Austin with that castle layout. And this is her underwater scene. So kind of, uh, kind of like stacks of buildings un underwater here. And then I love the sides in the background that kind of create that whole, whole kind of overall scene. Nice combination. We already seen some official sets combined with 
your own ideas and all the lovely colorful details here in front. Rounding the corner, we have a whole massive collaborative layout. We've done a video on this in the past, but we'll do another update video. This is the dream bunkers or uh, the uh, kind of post-apocalyptic idea of everybody building their own bunker here and then contributing it all into one. And I love this so much because there's so much creativity in here. Yeah, and with the chance to check out all those builds earlier on, and I think you picked this one as your favorite detail here. So Joker and Batman have a little fight there. I do, I do love that. And you've got Joker with the dynamite and Batman with the lobster. It's a great uh, Lego Batman movie reference. But I mean, you've got the Millennium Falcon. You've got a uh, hazmat spill here. It's tons and tons of builders represented. The APOC daycare, I remember this one from before. That's super cool. Oh, this is a giant version of the, the radio piece. It is, it is. And then next to that, we, we haven't seen a lot of Mario mocks at shows so far, but I don't, we'll see if people continue to do this. You got a whole Mario level. He's very relaxed right now. But again, it's good to see that uh, actually adult fans of Lego grab those sets and make something on their own. What do you think of uh, Dupocalypse here? This is Duplo uh, Apocalypse uh, build. So you've got like Mad Max and Duplo combined. It's always good to see. Again, I'm a big fan of Duplo as well. And uh, to see those elements here combined with Lego bricks is, is awesome. But you also have... Fabuland. Is that what that is? Perfect. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, this is crazy. There's so so much uh, violence happening here. So I think that's, that's one thing that makes me really enjoy this. And just the amount of weapons uh, and kind of gnarly looking vehicles on display is fantastic. Peace and love, Joshua. Peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> on the corner, we have lounge lizards. So this is like sort of a bar, but for large lizards. With a very unique build. There's also like a car on the wall. Nice details here. So all in all, another good looking layout. Some more smaller kind of post-APOC vehicles. Then you've got the misplaced island. So it's a wrecked big Duplo plane out there. Yeah, so this is kind of, I mean, they survived actually, but hopefully everything is fine there and everybody. Yeah, I, everything doesn't look so fine now. But hey, some more Fabulane, look at that. Yeah, I mean, those sets have been around since many, many years, and it's good to see that they're still used for some own LEGO creations. I love this big, giant vehicle here. Again, lots of weapons, kind of a whole kind of world in the middle of it. And then this, uh, this walker guy here is pretty neat as well, especially the way he's planted inside the build. Yeah, this looks good. And also this lovely layout in the back here, um, which looks really realistic. So... I haven't been to China yet, but I would guess this is the way it looks in some cities as, at, at least. Kind of a cyberpunk type of idea. Yeah, I was thinking that the same at first glance, but when you look at it, it's, it somehow looks realistic. And then we get into some steampunk here. So this massive, massive uh, steampunk ship, just absolutely mind-blowing, looks fantastic. Uh, it's, it catches your attention immediately. So this is steampunk, <laughs> all in all. So <laughs> this is not realistic, but it's lovely to, to see all those details here again. So many minifigures, and this is really massive. Fantastic work here. And then some smaller little uh, steampunk vehicles as well, even some kind of inspirational art drawings. And of course here, all shout out to all the pirate fans of the 80s. Uh, this ship is well known, but now it's a new version of it. There you go. It's like, almost like a Blacktron look to it. We've got the steam pack there on Chewbacca. And then this is Steampunk Princess. So you've got kind of a, a jungle scene around this big tall tower, the windmill on top, and then the princess there. Yeah, I already took a bunch of images here. So many details, such a lovely idea. It's really good looking. This next build is the Vitruvian Wonderworks, and it's almost, it's got like offices up top, and then this uh, big kind of machine. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing there on the right side, but you've got a really nice vehicle here and like a crab looking thing in the background. I think it's a coffee machine. Okay, I think you're, you're probably correct. And then 
a little bit of take on some Star Wars vehicles here as well. Uh, that's the Chop Squadron y -ring back, Y Wing back there. I like that. A whole bunch of spaceships by Chris Roberts here. You got a Blacktron maintenance outpost. Are you, uh, of, of all the older space themes, which one is your favorite? Actually, the classic space one with the typical blue and a gray color. Well, we're about to see a little bit of that, so I'm glad, I'm glad you're a fan. So we finish out some of these final vehicles here, and then some of the planets as well. And as I mentioned, massive classic space layout. So this is all, uh, pretty much all of this uh, is by one single builder, and it's just tons of kind of, uh, it, they, they've made, he's made, he's made the builds larger, let's put it that way. So that's basically just kind of sized it all up. So you can see there's studs on the base plates now, and all the builds are, are much larger here. So what are some of your favorite ships here? I mean, the Explorer in the middle is awesome. Uh, so we've s many, many ships we know from our childhood and to see them here again at such a large scale, this is really enjoyable just to look at it. Definitely from my childhood here, for sure. No, Joshua, of my childhood. <laughs> so yeah, just you can even pick up, uh, the builder was showing us earlier, you can, uh, Jason Ruff, who did a lot of these, you can like pick up a lot of, a lot of these and uh, swoosh it around. They're very heavy though. For example, this build here, I mean this element, so this is not a cheap model. And by the way, I had the chance to hold it, it's really heavy. Yes. F fantastic work here, so it's great to see him kind of continuing to modernize and upscale these old classic space sets. Uh, all these, even the iconic, the base plate with the kind of the moon craters on it. He's, he's done it all here. And then this is Joe Larson's robot command center, uh, which is another fantastic build that he's kind of upsized himself. It's so good looking and one of my personal highlights of the show. There's many highlights, but when you look at this from the side, it's like, uh, it's such a great idea. As we round the corner, we have the one and only Moto just hey chilling right here. I, first <laughs> off, great sweatshirt. I love that color. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. But also you have some builds here, so, so tell us what's going on. Oh yeah, I got a couple. The, the first one here um, is the Chrysalis 2. This is, uh, uh, the first version was my first mock and I wanted to revisit it five years later and redo it, clean it up. Um, and then I went a bit further. If you look behind it, there's a custom box. Uh, there's pieces of artwork in there and then there's two books of instructions. And this will be headed to a museum in Texas this summer. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I sent four of them out as gifts. So they're, they're being appreciated, which is a good thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, so that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, that's great work. I love to see you continuing to, to expand on your builds and also go in kind of other creative directions like the box art back there looks great. Yeah, the design of it rather than just the um, mock of it, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. full-blown set to instructions and wrapping and all that stuff is fun. For sure. Well, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we won't miss him because of his pullover here. <laughs> oh, because of his, his hoodie? Look at this, it's shiny. You can find him anywhere in the yeah, convention yeah. hall. So I've just met him today, great guy. Uh, here's the Galaxy Cruiser. There's a nice little drop ship, so sort of a Star Wars vibe. Interstellar prospecting, so kind of looking for some, some gold, doing some mining there. Little recon speeder. And again, the new Lego roller coaster element here. Or these, the red ones right that, there. That's called the Truffler. I like that name. The ornith Ornithopter is really cool back there as well. And then to finish out this section, we've got uh, this whole build here. So it's kind of like a space uh, station almost idea. So protected from the elements with all the glass in there. Well, it looks like people having a party. And I would, uh, yeah, this looks great, like the old restaurant with this element. But I would love to talk to the architect of this. I mean, oh my goodness, look at this. But this looks all in all great. Yeah, the, the buildings look a little precarious there. Like they're might about to fall down because there's not a lot holding them up. So I would dance downstairs and not, not up there. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. Well, that finishes out this section. So we've got a couple more for you now. Behind me now is an incredible build by Eric Matson. So every year we talk about whatever giant build he has on display at Breaks the Cascade. This year he's done an entire bathroom sink display. So you've got the toothpaste, the hairbrush, the sink itself. You've got cabinets underneath it. 
there's flowers, there's even what looks kind of like a mirror. But one thing that makes this so fun is all of the characters that bring it to life. Yeah, so we had a look around early on and it's so much fun. It's not only like an upscaled Lego model, it's also a story which is told here. Mm -hmm. So we can come around to the side and show some of that real quick. So it's kind of like all these characters, they live in the wall here and then they come out and maybe create some mayhem occasionally. They have some fun in the evening. <laughs> You can't blame them for that. But yeah, this is so neat. I love the little like hammocks where they live. There's even some more on the background as well. And then the, the design around the, the mirror area is great too. So this is really a model you can look from each side. There's something to explore and many, many bricks have been used here. And, and something he uh, incorporates in his builds every year is like a photo opportunity. So with this one, obviously you can stand in there uh, and it looks like you're inside the build when you get take it through the mirror. It is so much fun and one highlight here <laughs> at the exhibition. There's even some lights up top as well which I hadn't even noticed earlier so you can get some lighting element on top of the uh, just how massive this whole thing is. Yeah and I really really like this idea with a little man just walking around <laughs> and and they're doing all this stuff here and in the morning you guess what was happening there. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. But now we got to make our way to the next section. And now we're in the architecture section here. So this is the Los Angeles City Hall by Bruce Heller. It's had this build around for a little while now. Always fantastic. The presentation style and everything looks great. Haven't been there, but this looks great, yeah. So, someday, someday you'll make it there. This is a city life living the dream. So there's kind of like a big uh, warehouse apartment type building and then uh, lots of action all around. Everybody's eating pizza here, so there again. That is your dream, isn't it? Of course, eating pizza the whole day. And then you've got a couple of fantastic builds by Paul Hetherington. His presentation style is always fantastic. Uh, so one of these are the the one on the left is a uh, Guji, I think it's called, and it's like a sort of a cafe area. And then on the right, it's uh, Atomic Ranch. So uh, I love the the colorfulness of the, both of these. The presentation looks great. Both are really great looking, so many details, the background is fantastic and really nice idea. The way he works with his perspective looks wonderful as well. Yeah, this is the thing, you can stand here and really have the feeling that you can see all the details in front of you and kind of explore what, what you've got here. Mm -hmm. S speaking of what, shout out to Paul right here as, as he goes by as well. Great, great work here. What, what can you tell us about the belts? Oh, they're kind of a, a tribute to uh, mid-century modern style, you know, Palm Springs and Atomic Ranch and uh, L.A. kind of, you know, mid-century style in the Googie one. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, once again, just colorful and fun, and uh, you're guaranteed to get hungry if you look inside the restaurant. You're going to want a milkshake, you're going to want a hamburger, hot dog. I love it. Yeah, that's what we were just saying, so thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Now as we come around here, this is the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. So you've got kind of the, the whole outer section. It's got the uh, Olympic flags there. Yeah, nice entrance situation here. As I call it, it's a town planner. So this looks really good. Check out the, the Funko. So it's a Lego Funko crossover. Yeah, why not? I mean, you could do it. And you see the, the, the figures here in front and on the back you have this factory. Wow, that, that is cool. I like that. I think that's a very unique take on the, uh, they said this is the, the Funko headquarters in Everett, Washington. And I like those colors, like this blue and this orange. It always looks good together. Here's a music store, so another music store for you. Again, something you don't know, but when I was a kid, I went to such stores all the time. <laughs> I love it. Then the diner, these are kind of lit up modular buildings, I think, in the back there. Yeah, so all those American stylish um, modulars in a row, which is always good to see. Here is Cabin in the Cascades. So this is kind of a classic sort of Oregon uh, Cascades cabin idea with all the snow around it. Yeah, and it seems it's winter, it's cold, and you can feel the cold. So it's, it, it looks great from this angle as well. Nice technique here with the window. Mm -hmm. which looks interesting. That kind of half stud offset. Yeah, of course, with a jumper plate. So this is fun. We're going to have to keep you from getting too into this next build here, but this chocolate shop looks fantastic. Again, I would like to leave right now to have some chocolate, but I will stay. This looks great.
<laughs> you've, re you've really been pushing through. I appreciate it. No, no, no. I stay. I stay. <laughs> here's here's another build you might be able to help us pronounce. Yep. I'm like, dude, this is Schloss Neuschwanstein, the south of Germany. So Neuschwanstein Castle. Um, yeah. It's Have a, you been there? I haven't been there yet. No. What? Yeah. Oh man, it looks so cool. I've always wanted to go. This is what Germans do. They travel to Portland, but never have <laughs> been to. It's really in the south of Germany, so live in the north. It's um, yeah. Okay, it's it's an excuse. You're you're allowed. It's far away. Okay. <laughs> you could try taking a train there, but this next build is the Brentwood Sunshine Preschool. So you know, some things just everyday normal things like a house or preschool make for great builds. And again, nice roof. I was thinking about the building taking. Oh, okay, okay. This is the trick. This is allowed. You just you know put the tile there and not press it on all four studs. And this looks really realistic. So this is a nice looking house, but not a minifig scale. It's it's smaller, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. should be smaller. Very nice. Nice yes. build. Yes, there, there's nice. there's the there's the builder right there. I love the presentation style as well. Thank you. What, what, what can you tell us? Uh, what's some fun facts? Well, I did uh, brick, build, brick bending down the sides here okay. because the back area is one story lower than the front and you know I could have cheated that but I really wanted that slope to to get in there um, also the window in the front on the roof uh, it's called a, an eyebrow dormer window I learned that <laughs> I had to learn that uh, was really hard to do and I did it using um, treads from uh, tank to get that curve of the roof uh, as for the window itself um, I did, for the dormer window, I did, um, I masked it off and spray painted it. Okay. I know. A I know. customization. Yeah, a customization. <laughs> but also, the windows all have uh, window panes on them. I wanted it to have that, that extra little detail, that little touch. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Great work. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Fantastic to see all the little details that go into the build there. Now this is a map of Portland. You've, you've had a little bit of a chance to explore, but I don't think you've gotten out quite this far. No, but we've been there yesterday in downtown. We've explored the area here around the convention center. So this is great looking and you can recognize the city here. There you go. Here's uh, some more architecture builds here as well. And then this is the Rose Quarter, which I think is another section of Portland as well. Yeah, so this is, I think, in this, here right now, right now, in this moment, Justin Bieber is giving his concert. And we check out the prices, like 600 euro for a place in the front row. So we will go there right now, right? <laughs> yes, right after this is over. <laughs> that's, that's his this is your, your build? What, what should I say about it? <laughs> should I come over here? Yes, what, what, what are some fun facts about the build here? Fun facts. Um, well, I'm an architecture guy, so I started with the Memorial Coliseum build, which is kind of a shunned building in the Portland community right now because it's it doesn't have a really designated use anymore. But architecturally, it's it's a really cool building. It's got curtain walls all the way around, and it's held up by these four concrete pillars in the corners. Um, it's kind of got this concrete bowl on the inside um, where all the seats sit. So it's just architecturally, it's a really clean, fun, international style building from like 19. 60 something um once i built this i was like i got to build the other arena and make the whole rose quarter together so um i made the roofs removable and um yeah that's that's kind of the story and like like you were saying justin bieber's causing traffic right now <laughs> just next door so if i add my third base plate right here uh to where we're standing you know, I just need the "you are here" sign, and it would complete the complete the trilogy, so to speak. I love the way you put these together with the removable roofs, so you can see inside, and it just opens the whole thing up into a whole world there. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, I thought that was pretty key because I could have probably done things differently if I didn't have the roofs removable. Maybe made the exterior a little more shapely and smoother with the curves and everything. But I thought the interiors of arena are, you know, that's where all the action happens. So I thought it'd be cool to highlight that as well. And then I made a little graphic for those people that don't know about the buildings, or maybe they don't even realize they're standing in their shadow. So, yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you. Keep up the good work. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.
There we go. And we've got a builder still hard at work here as well. Uh, love the shirt, by the way. It goes very well with the layout as well, all the nice colors. <laughs> what, what are you working on right now? Uh, I'm working on the Microscale Modular Railroad. Okay. And so built around the Micropolis, Mil, uh, Minneapolis block, I wanted to try and figure out how to put roads and track as a border to Micropolis. We got a curve thrown at us this time because the blocks are kind of at an angle because of a few interesting angled plates. And so the main line shrunk a little bit. So I'm adding a second dual track siding and now I'm just placing all of the cars on. Uh, you what you end up doing is, for example, these are eight wide cars, but uh, jumper plates and one tile underneath, you can't see it looking at the track. The next one, three tiles in between and single studs. The reason is that I'm using roller skate, minifig skate figures, and those toe pieces just make the couplers look so good. And at that point, it's a half stud offset. So one's built on studs, the next one's built on jumpers. And I'm just lining up everything down the road. You can see the main line that I've got auto stack cars and modular freight already out. I'm putting some passenger cars here waiting to go back to the station and load passengers and then I'll fill in the yard. Perfect. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm glad you got your shout out to Justin Bieber in there. Of course I did and now we have trains again. Yeah. <laughs> got a nice bridge here and then Narnia. So it's a whole map. You can see kind of the paper map they based it off of. Really great and like inspiration and uh, different colors and you see those different worlds here um, captured in one on one display, great. I like this, uh, the curved wall looks fantastic there to kind of create that whole depth of space scene. Yeah, it's good when you use black bricks. So it looks like um, magical, but it's, it's really nice. And I wonder why it is moving. Do we have an idea there? I, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm running out of English here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like... <laughs> You're doing great. You're talking it's going to be 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this whole tour is just going to take 10 minutes. That's how we convince you to do it. Okay. No, those are little uh, tiny builds here, which are all cute. And I especially like the bat wing in front, which is really cool. 1989. Of course, those days. And some more little micro scenes. I like, I like this one here with the clouds. Nice use of purple. Very fancy. Very welcome. A nice little, like, uh, let's see, is that the, the uh, Swedish, I think? It is, my good friend, it oh, is. Go. Go. <laughs> Occasionally I get it right. Yeah, I know, this is Sweden. You know Sweden from IKEA, HM. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a live scenario here, like, is Portland. So we've been around, maybe we've seen some of those buildings here. We've been there, I think. And uh, Yeah, this, mm -hmm. this skyscraper we've actually seen. So it's always good to see. And it seems to be an ongoing process here. So it's not finished yet. Yeah. You can always add more. Ch Tiny yellow castle there looks fantastic as well. I love that. Another classic here, the Briggs Cascade. <laughs> oh, look at the mountains and how like precarious they are. They're, so ba they're balanced so well. Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then some, the colony build. Here's a High Rock Citadel by Eli Wilsey. Ooh, what do we, we got some Gulliver's Travels using the, the Galador figure. Seems to be not the biggest fan of Galador. <laughs> uh, the Summer Sanctuary, also by Eli, look at that. I mean, the way he set the mood, creating that whole box, and then the light uh, kind of pulsating in there, and then the water coming down. And I like especially the buildings there. Uh, this looks really great. In the end, like, has those tiny buildings mm -hmm. in this massive layout. This... This is a fantastic build. I love that. Oh, check out packed cargo ship. Just a quick look here. I'm from Hamburg, so this is the harbor, of course, and I've seen evergreen ships, so it's good to see. <laughs> uh, look at this. All the whole town laid out here. I love the, kind of the rock at the bottom of the cliff as well. It looks great because it's another way to build actually a mountain. We've seen like this with, uh, with slopes and stuff, and right here, just use tiles and... I mean, why not? It's possible. This is, yeah. And some bricks are lying around. Why not? Go for it. Now we have a build. We've covered this over the years, but I think the builders continue to add to it. This is the whole uh, 
mall, the uh, Washington, D.C. mall, uh, all along here. So you've got the uh, Washington uh, Monument, uh, you've got the Lincoln Memorial, you've got the, the Capitol building, everything here. No, Lincoln Memorial is still. Oh, oh, Lincoln Memorial hasn't been added yet. My bad. I thought, I thought he. I think we're still, we're still getting to that. Yeah, I can help whatever you want. No, but, but I've, I've been there, so I've, I went the whole way. So this is in the middle, and then Lincoln would be here. Um, it's still missing. May I correct you? I'm sorry about that. But you're it's, not allowed to correct me okay, on our video. And we have all the museums on the side, so this is a lovely setting, and uh, you must be. There. So I've been there only once. It's such a nice walk, iconic walk to see all those buildings and yeah, stand in front of more. So it's, it's really great to see and all in all it matched perfectly. And yeah, I would like to see it grow. And someday we even have the Link Memorial. <laughs> I'll, I'll look forward to that day. But no, this is a whole fantastic layout here. So thank, thank you for noticing that. You're welcome. No, it's, it's all in all, it's perfect. And we'll round the corner here. Oh, oh, we need, we need to, to come back. To come back just to add this for me here we go oh, so i i'm expecting you to make an apology video soon it is there it is still there <laughs> i was wrong i'm sorry it is there <laughs> uh this says want to try let me know so these are vehicles that people can kind of try out playing with i guess it's always great um when you can interact with the people who are coming to the show mm -hmm. and then check out this I, I know I know you're a bit of a Star Trek fan. I am, and this can actually rot rotate in, on top. I've seen a video yet, and this is, yeah, nice stuff. Oh, you got to feature this the nap. you got to feature this nap. I mean, that stuff hasn't been seen in decades, okay. right? Just because just you came over, we'll give it a shout-out here. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> there we go. It's Zaptastic. It is a little handwritten mock card there. Yeah, this is all I would like to see. No, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, ooh, it's the GBC mascot. Oh, that's super cool. It's like a GBC ball, and it moves. And it can actually roll over the floor, so I've seen a video as well. So, great stuff, nice ideas, and unique. And speaking of GBC, uh, we're, about, we're about to get there here. A few uh, pendulum clocks, some rover, a few, few small builds here, and then well, I like the, the oscillating desk fan, though, as well. That's very cool. And then it's the whole GBC layout. Obviously, it's not running right now, but we will definitely do a video on the GBC, as we always try our best to do, because they look fantastic, and the GBC builders put in so much time and effort. It is always great to see the loops and all the different models, and to see that the 9 volt is still out there. For sure. But I think that finishes out this section then, and I think we've got one final section left. And I believe finishing out the tour for us tonight, we've got Bionicle and the Classic section. So we'll start right here with Patrick Biggs' section. He is a staple of the local uh, Portland Lego community here. Always brings out incredible builds. I love seeing his work. Uh, not to mention his fantastic, massive Lego brick badge here as well. So shout out to all the bricks he's got there. But there are some great builds here. I love the, the postman there. So he's got the Lego package. Yeah. He is ready to go. So I'm not really into Bionicle, but it's good to see that there are so many fans out there and take those parts and create something on their own. Yes. I also love the, the Tahoe one by uh, Patrick Biggs up there as well. I think that, that color combination with the red and gold and the blue. Again, it's all about colors, and this looks really stunning, not only because of the colors, but it looks really shiny. Mm -hmm. we'll, c we'll keep going this way through more of the Bionicle. And here, look at these kind of like killer flower pieces. Those are scary. Don't put them in your living room. What about this big centipede as well? Again, nothing I would like to have in my room, but it's lovely to see all those different colors here. Well, I like this uh, Stormfly. That's by Jason Head. It's got the kind of cool brick-built character there on the back. That's really neat. Here's uh, Sax Squatch. So he's uh, Sax Squatch playing the saxophone. It's all about music. <laughs> well, look at the uh, Metro Nui uh, mosaic. So using very nice uh, kind of the world uh, map color pieces. Again, it's great to see when people buy a set and do something on their own. Giant squid, giant black squid using the tire pieces. Yeah, it's, uh, it's allowed and this looks scary. Well, I'm, glad I, I'm glad you said it was allowed. If not, I might have had to do something yeah, I about mean, it. Uh, they have not to ask for my permission, <laughs> but sometimes I would just add this information. <laughs> Uh, some more fantastic characters. I like this big green guy here. I like the hair on this guy here as well, the Iceman. And then some uh, like spider-type characters. Oh, check out these. Uh, speaking of ice characters, there's Avalanche and Iceman back there. Look at the big giant snowflakes on the end of that staff. 
yeah, I'm. It's nice, nice to see different scales here of those figures, right there, like tiny one, one big one. Good stuff. Uh, this blue Nova is really great as well. Uh, oh, look at this one uh, with the purple. It's almost like a like a bird type of build. Yeah, it's it's funny to see all those different figures here. Like one could fly, one could uh, explore. Crawl around. Crawl around, exactly. Thanks for helping me out here. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this guy? Oh my goodness, yeah. So this could be kind of part of a Spider-Man movie. <laughs> that's, that's what you think. You'll see that in the next Spider-Man. I like it. <laughs> a little sentry. Oh, it's shout out to Exoforce. Exoforce is such an underrated theme in my opinion. Using one of the robots there in the sentry build. Again, reach out to Lego. I mean, they'll listen to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think, I think if I tell them to just bring back any theme, they'll do it. Immediately. Oh, uh, I like the uh, underwater kind of shark creature there. It's another great use of color. Some of those elves type colors. Teal is back. There we go. Uh, I think this is some Galador type inspired stuff. Yeah. I think we've seen this figure like five times in the show. Only At least the legs. Now he has a dog head. Yeah, so some things have changed here. This Galador dragonfly. Oh, look at the happy little palm trees there using, using the legs. This is always great to see um, the usage of such element and create something unique with other Lego bricks as well. We're getting some really sizable ones using all these big bionicle pieces. Look at he's got the whole uh, ball piece there as well. In teal. <laughs> May I repeat myself? I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> and now we move from Bionicle to the classic section. So this uh, is layouts of a lot of the stuff probably from your childhood. This is me sitting in the living room, have set up my whole pirate layout. I'm owner of this beloved setting, this set. We have both ships at home still. Um, I've got this set. So this is like really the 80s are back here. Yes. Awesome looking. No, I, I had a lot of this stuff growing up in the 90s as well. I think it's fantastic. Like the fortress here is really cool. So I think it transcends eras and you can enjoy this no matter when you were playing with Lego. Yeah, so late 80s, um, 90s always yeah. also. But you even got some of the books and comics? No, I have not. But this is such a beauty. So one of the best Lego sets of all time, the Barracuda. There we go. Some more, look at it, you've got the instructions, obviously more of the sets here. Uh, the Islanders, really fantastic, some really unique like canoe pieces, the base plates are really great, minifigure designs. So this is kind of more in your, uh, more related to, to your age. So this is kind of not, not my dark ages, but it has been, they released the sets after the pirate ones. Yeah, it says 94 to 95 there. Yeah, here we, here we, here we go. I, lo I love all of these here. Uh, and even in the, the art, look at all the gold. You've got uh, pirates coming up to the islanders. Yeah. Very cool. I like those um, old Lego gold coins. Moving from pirates, we've got city here. So uh, just lots of city base plates, uh, early hospital, some space. You know, this seems like we're talking about another century, which it is true. I'm owner of this old hospital. I'm owner of this show station. You'll see how old I, I am. Now you're just showing off. I'm already 32. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, no, this is really old stuff. Uh, I like those buildings and this one as well. Maybe my sister, but don't tell her that the set is in my hand now, and the police station. So these are all sets like um, mid, I would say 86 or something right here. And to combine them. And those are the really old street plates without the... Uh, a cycle, a bicycle lane. I love this here. So this is kind of custom creation. It's combining up different themes and elements. So this is the Forestman's Cat Cafe. Then you've got Salty Sammy's Sausage Shack back there. So it's kind of combining up these classic themes. It's always good to um, travel back in time and to see those old sets like this pizzeria. This was kind of a tiny set, but I still remember it. So when you see it, it's kind of flashback suddenly and you think, oh my goodness, this is my childhood here. Very, very nice. You've got it's just some basic buildings here as well. So this is kind of like basic architectural forms. 
whole lots of lots and lots of small little uh, vehicles. Again, the 80s are back here, so I have some of those at home as well. Mm -hmm. Got the tipper truck, three times tipper truck size, so kind of like we saw with classic space. Uh, here's giant Lego bricks made of regular bricks. Again, kind of upscaled idea. Oh, and some of the old Duplo. Oh, great stuff. We see all those bricks which are still around and this is like an another a tiny Ice Planet. Scale. Ice Planet and Tiny Scale, yeah. Forest Mint, some of my all-time favorite sets. I love it. The characters are so much fun. Just the, the Robin Hood idea has always been such a fun idea to me. It's great. Yeah, those sets are real classic and it's good to see them here in Portland. Then this is uh, maybe, it's like, re I think a lot of uh, custom layout here with a lot of these minifigures and the road plates and everything as well. Then you've got Spurious, so one of the older kind of uh, space themes. Yeah, I mean, we've seen different classic space themes over the years. And uh, those are um, colorful sets, but it's kind of the end of the whole classic, classic space area. Then some more Ice Planet in the background. I love the art that comes with this as well. So there's like custom art there. And look at this massive, large elements we've got there. But they are good looking. Some more custom kind of base plates. You've got the taco truck with the mariachi band. You've got a parade going through here. Classic space, fire. Ghostbusters? Who are you going to call? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, then the AquaZone. Nice sets as well. I think uh, Jang is having some of those in his massive layout, underwater layout. So it's always good to see those old sets as well. Yeah, uh, AquaZone is one of my favorite underwater themes just because of the orange neon, uh, the yellow bases, and again, those base plates. Again, yeah, exactly what I was about to say. Those great classic base plates. And I think that might actually uh, complete it for us today. So I think this is the final section here. So we've done our best to show you as much of the, the builds as we possibly could. So we've uh, walked around here. Great job. Thank you so much for joining me for your, your very first convention, doing a whole tour. I hope you enjoyed getting to see all the builds. It was so much fun to have a look around, to see all those builds. Thank you for having uh, me. Before I let you go, where can people find your work? Only on Beyond Break. No, uh, um, on Zusammengebaut, so my blog in, uh, in Germany. A lot. We have a great team writing about uh, Lego each day and I will do some photos here on the show as well. So thank you so much for having me. It's impossible to spell so we'll put a link in the description of the website because I can never figure it out either. And after speaking uh, so much English I would like to say Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> have a great one everyone. Bye.